Hey everyone, today's topic is on the minimum wage. This topic is very interesting because the more I did research on this, the more complex it became. You can't just give a lazy answer to this and hand wave opposition. I'm going to give everyone the general pros to raising the federal minimum wage and the general problems of doing so. After that, I will share my solution to this problem. Once again, I'm no expert economist, but I made sure to present everything here as accurately as possible because there is little room for error. There are some strong opinions here whether or not you're for increasing the minimal wage. Uh, hey, what's that bat for? I don't know. Just hoping I don't have to use it. As of this video's upload, the federal minimum wage in America is $7.25 per hour, but on the state level it varies quite a bit. States like Alabama and Idaho adhere to the federal minimum wage of $7.25, and other states go for much higher, for example, $13.79 per hour in Washington. The reason why each state has its own different minimum wage is likely due to each state having its own different cost of living, economic climate, geography, or due to fiscal policies within it. Keep that in mind because I will return to that later. When people talk about raising the federal minimum wage to $15 per hour, they aren't saying immediately. Anyone saying it's an overnight switch from $7.25 to $15 per hour is either ignorant on economics or is trying to interpret other people's arguments in bad faith. <laughs> That's the internet for you. Always knew you were a postmodernist libtard. You think you could say everything's a social construct so everything can be anything. What the heck does that have to do with whether or not cereal is a soup? It has to be gradual to allow businesses in areas with the $7.25 wage to adjust to the increasing amount. Much like a rapidly changing environment will diminish a species' chances to adapt and survive in it. A benefit of raising the minimum wage is that it will help those who are below the poverty line struggling to make ends meet. A stagnant $7.25 minimum wage is not good when the purchasing power of a dollar is decreasing and the cost of living is increasing over the years. Working at that rate of pay full time is not enough and it's stressful knowing that one accident is enough to set you back. A car accident, an unexpected medical bill, or a heavy tree branch falling on your house can be a heavy blow on someone who's already compromising just to live paycheck to paycheck. Finally, a nest for my babies. Perfect. Some people will pull up Google and counter this by saying the household income has been increasing over the years, but it's not increasing as fast as inflation. Another benefit to raising the federal minimum wage is that it can narrow the racial pay gap because black and Latino people often work in lower wage jobs than white people. As you can see here in comparison to black and white people, the wage gap has been getting worse since the year 2000. This doesn't necessarily mean white people get paid more than black people for the same job, but it does mean that the kind of job, the location of the job, the wage it offers, and of course the historical and social context play a role among others. Just to quickly touch on this part, I bring up race as a way to explore how a subject interacts with certain demographics. I get the mere mentioning of it can get people excited to say the least. Just know I'm using race as a tool rather than to bait people into outrage. So I touched on this a bit in my UBI video, how location plays a role in opportunity. You're going to have a hard time finding your dream job of $30 per hour in a poor or underfunded neighborhood. So this all seemed very compelling and could help a lot of people. But could there be unforeseen adverse effects to raising the minimum wage to $15 federally? Every policy is not without its problems. Raising the minimum wage to $15 federally disregards the unique economic climate of each state, and especially cities within that state. What if the minimum wage is already proportionate to the cost of living there? It costs less to live in a rural state than an urban state. So it makes sense that the minimum wage in a rural state would be lower. Also raising the minimum wage to $15 per hour in certain rural states could hurt them. For example, West Virginia's poverty is 3.7 percentage points higher than the national average, and this is before COVID-19. Businesses in those areas unequipped to handle the increased expenses will raise the prices of products and services to cover their employees' new wages. This would increase the cost of living and we'll find ourselves back at square one in those areas. Another problem is the possible job loss. Sticking with West Virginia again, there are a lot of small businesses and so-called mom-and-pop shops that will have to lay off workers or close altogether. 
Not every business owner is living in a matching room for exotic sports cars. They could be on the lower end of the earning spectrum with just enough to keep it going month to month, but increased operating costs via raising the minimum wage to $15 per hour will hurt these businesses. Businesses have to maintain their profits and if operating expenses get too high, they will begin laying off employees or raise prices to stay in operation. If that isn't enough, then the businesses will have to close. So people want you to raise your minimum wage to $15. These stupid inner city college kids don't know what they're talking about. Another possibility is the outsourcing of jobs outside of America to less expensive labor markets. This is in regards to larger businesses with the money and connections to do so. Businesses already do this to cut down operation costs, so this could be exacerbated with the increased minimum wage. Large businesses could possibly deem the increased labor cost to be more than what they're willing to pay and will invest in cheaper labor cost. An example would be in automation. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you knew that would come up again. Last but not least, we might see overqualified workers taking the minimum wage jobs that would have otherwise been given to young and or inexperienced workers, thus making it harder for them to enter the job market. Perhaps employers of entry-level positions would be more biased towards the experienced job applicants due to the increase in minimum wage. To sum this up, inflation and job loss are very possible problems if the federal minimum wage increases to $15 per hour by the near future. In the next section, I'll share my solutions. I believe what makes this topic a firestorm online is that no matter what stance you take, you're going to get crapped on. Yeah, that's online politics no matter what topic is being discussed. <sighs> we gotta fix that. Considering the pros and cons of raising the federal minimum wage to $15 per hour by the near future, I'd say I'm all for it state-wise. Whereas poorer states, I'd like to see a reasonable, smaller increase. That way we can consider the economic climate of each state and increase the minimum wage accordingly. Now that I think about it, this will mean I support a federal increase in the minimum wage, but not at $15 per hour. However, for the states that can maintain it, push for $15 minimum wage. The cost of living in America is going up, which means the American workers' wages should increase along with it. I get that each state has its own unique problems, so this is the best way to consider that. If a state's economy is on the poorer side, I don't think increasing the minimum wage there to $15 is going to help it. I want to talk about this one talking point people bring up in support of a $15 federal minimum wage. They will post something that says CEOs earn 320 times as much as the average worker, and that's why these companies on the higher earning spectrum should raise their entry-level positions to $15 per hour. In 2019, this huge amount of $21.3 million in compensation for CEOs that's been increasing over the years is a contributing factor to increased inequality when it comes to workers' pay. Basically, CEOs receive compensation based on their performance. If a CEO is bringing in profits for investors, their compensation is higher. It should be noted that there are different kinds of compensation. There are cash-based salaries, bonuses, stock options, and stock ownership. Moving back to the original source, it says that what's causing this increased compensation is due to stock-related compensation. Stock awards were invested in stock options when cashed in rather than granted. The problem with stock options is that when shares go up in value, CEOs make a lot of money from options. And when it goes down in value, they can swap old option shares for new low-priced shares, which decreases the risk of losing money from this. This points to CEO compensation not reflecting the value of their performance as intended, but rather how can CEOs use their power to set how much money they are paid. Yes, this is a problem, but unless I'm missing something here, I don't see how this relates to the minimum wage topic. Even the source itself doesn't relate this to minimum wage, and I think raising the minimum wage wouldn't stop CEOs from doing this. In fact, I think they'll get more greedy. What's needed here are policies specifically designed to limit their ability and reduce incentives for them to do this. It's time for a revolution! Stop that. There's still time to turn things around. Here's this one con I saw floating around the internet, but I didn't include it. Someone mentioned that $15 per hour would make people complacent in entry-level positions. They were meant to be a starting point, and then you work your way up to be a manager one day. While I get the sentiment, I disagree, because the $20 to $30 per hour range is enough to cover your basic needs. $7.25 per hour goes by fast, no matter which state you're in. So I think $15 is reasonable, based on the state. 
Also consider that many times life does its thing and you end up in a low wage position longer than you were expecting. A lot of low wage workers are not teenagers. 88% of low wage workers are older than 20 and a third of them are over 40. These are people whose adult lives are beginning or in the middle of it all. Raising the federal minimum wage somewhat would help these people who probably have families to raise. If you want to aim to be a manager or you finally landed the position and you want to encourage others to do the same, great for you, but let's help the people who aren't there yet. So here's where I stand economically for those who are curious. I'm for a capitalist system mixed with social policies. If you want to be technical, a social democrat. <laughs> He's a cubby! Kill him! <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I don't think just raising wages will fix everything because I believe there are systematic problems that need to be addressed. The workers' wages and inflation seem to be symptoms of the problem, rather than being the heart of it. Once again, I'm no economic expert, and I'm learning as I go. Feel free to correct me if I got something wrong, or give head pats for getting something right. Ooh woo. Even if we disagree... <laughs> Even if we disagree in the air, I hope something of value is gained through the exchange. So that's my minimum wage hot take. If you want to keep the channel going or help fund my upcoming series, you can become a patron. The link is down below and any mod is greatly appreciated. Anyways, I gotta go. Be nice to one another and take care of yourselves.